With one word the mountains move And when you breathe the dead arise And the bones come back to life There is power in this room Where the Spirit of the Lord is There's life Where the Spirit of the Lord is There's freedom Like a river running wild Like a never-ending fire Where the Spirit of the Lord is And it's your name that tears down coming to church on a rainy day you know we get to go to church yes and we get to go when it's raining yes what a great yeah. it doesn't stop us here does it no glory to god glory to god well welcome church family we're so glad you guys are here today are you glad to be here are you glad to be in the house of the lord i'm telling you god's got a great message um that you're just going to enjoy it. I believe that you, everyone in this room will receive. You'll not leave here without some kind of impartation. If it's one word, if it's one line, or it's the whole message, you're going to leave filled and full with everything that God has for you. You know, I've noticed, have you ever noticed that, you know, you'll talk with a friend after a message and you'll go, ah, you know, all of this, and then all of this over here. But, and you'll get different things. But it all comes together. And so the Lord is very individual. He has a message for you individually. So just come in here today pulling on Pastor Chip to bring forth what you need in your situation right now. Glory to God. So welcome, church family. We're so glad you're here. Welcome, Internet family. I think we're right there. So hi, Internet family. We love you guys. We're thankful for you. I liked how Tyler turned around and waved at him. Good job, Tyler. Good job. Love it. Love it. And any first-time visitors, any first-time visitors today, 
Oh, glory to God. Yes, right there. Nice to meet oh, you guys. Oh, I know them. You know them already, huh? They had a softball. Uh, I, I preached at their church, but I've known them in the... In the um, her mom and dad are pastors in... Where is that in Missouri? Greenville? Greenfield. Fields. Okay, yeah. Green. I knew it was somewhere. Green. You knew it was green. <laughs> We knew it was but green. The daughter plays softball, and she was playing in Owasso this weekend, and it got rained out today. So they, she's oh. in her little uniform, and they came to church. Hey, so good for you, girl. Good for you. Well, good. She's ready to play ball. She's ready to come and hear the word of God. Glory to God. Anybody else? I, there was a oh. couple right there. Yeah. Where are you guys from? Really. Wow. New Mexico. Recently, like... Last six weeks? Wow. Oh, okay. Well, we're so glad you're I'm here. I'm familiar with Albuquerque. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's about as far as we go. I go there every year. <laughs> good people. Other side? <laughs> oh, okay, other side. Okay. Okay, well, good. Well, good. Well, we're glad you're here. You ever been here. there when the balloons are all... Yeah. Man, that's amazing. It is I've never been there. I've seen pictures. Yeah. yeah. The hot air balloons. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Some kind of festival. Hot air balloon festival. Balloon festival. Balloon festival. Balloon festival. <laughs> they named that properly. Yes, they did. They must have had a committee. Yeah. <laughs> or the okay. Spirit of the Lord. What are we okay, going to name this? What are we going to name this? Glory mm -hmm. to God. Well, uh, at this time, we're going to move to a little announcement today. Remember, the first Sunday of the month is our Mission Possible Sunday. So I'm going to ask Nikki to come on up here with us. We are not going to AGCQVC today. We're just going to talk. Uh, yeah, you're never here, so you on um, this day. <laughs> AGCQVC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, MT, MPTV. MP. Mission Possible Television. Everything. Yes. And this, you know. And this yeah, acronym. yeah. That's what we do. That's what uh, we do. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, the reason we're. We BTL. Are, we are not go Well, go ahead, Jason. Here, I'll go scoot ahead. down. You and come on down. Anyways. So we're going to give you an opportunity. Now, remember, this is for our, our bags, our, our shoe boxes that we send in November to the kids in other countries. We never know which country it's going to at this time. At the time, we send them until right before, or sometimes we don't even know um, at all. Actually, all of our boxes out of the Tulsa area go down to a distribution in Texas, in North Texas. And then from there, they, have, they go through sort of a... Um, they go through to make sure that they're going to go fine through customs, and they get divvied up, and then they go on to shipping cartons. Yeah. So technically, a lot of our church might go in a group, but they could very well go to multiple countries, even from our boxes alone. So. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? And I don't know if you remember last year, the young man we, had brought, we brought in that talked about the yo-yo. Desiree and, Nana. Yeah. Yes, yes, and yeah. how that yo-yo changed his life. How that yo-yo saved him and, and his whole family, right? Yeah, he actually um, started multi he started ministering throughout his village and multiple villages. He became a missionary at like age seven or eight. And um, he is just a strong man of God, and he's definitely uh, sticking it to the devil, so we love that. <laughs> he just graduated from ORU, and he's, he's just doing a lot for God. Go, so. He's on fire. He's on yeah. fire for Fulfilling God. Fulfilling the, the yo -yo plan for boy. his life, for sure. The yo-yo boy. Yeah. But it's because of your contributions. Are people like you con contr giving contributions to it? So this last month we did this item. This item is going into the box, and we have a committee that's going to paint the items. And so we, are, uh, we still need a little bit more to reach our goal for this item. So we're going to give you an opportunity to help us. They are $3 a bag. So if you would like to give, pay for one bag, great. If you'd like to pay for two bags, great. If you want to pay for 20 bags, that's awesome. But this is an opportunity, and this will go into those boxes that we send out in November. Usually we do this right before November, December, which is a lot going on in the holidays. So we, Nikki has created a connect group, Mission Impossible. Mission possible. Mission possible. What did I say? It's Mission. possible. It is possible. Dun, 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 dun. That's what you're thinking of. Yes, See, that's why I we am. hired him on the network. So Yes, that's why he's here yes. today. Keep going. 
<laughs> Anyways, go ahead, Nikki. <laughs> so, Greg's um, and Greg. So, okay. the idea around this is every single month, our Connect group meets. We prepare the items in advance. We pray, plan, and pack shoe boxes year round. Um, and we meet the third Wednesday of the month. And then once a month, we connect with you guys as the overall church so that you can participate in this well. Because we believe that not only is there a blessing for the recipient of the box, but for the givers as well. Amen. So we want you to have a part in that. Opportunity. And um, if you want to give with this, you can do it in the app. There is a designated drop down for a mission possible, or you can designate that on your offering envelopes. And then following service, one of the things that our Mission Possible Connect group did this last month was we have Christmas cards. We have them packaged in a package of five cards with instructions for you. And this is just um, something we are going to put in each and every card. They're blank, so you get to write in them. We need good penmanship with loving words. And so we've given you, if you're not really sure what to write in there, we've given you some examples of what you can write um, on, the, on the cards. We'll have these in the lobby where you can pick them up. We're just going to ask for your name and your phone number and how many packets you take. We want everybody to be able to participate. And um, you can just fill those out, put them back in the envelope or in the baggie, and then drop them back off. And we just want everybody to have an opportunity to participate in this. And then these will be put into all the boxes when we do our final pack in November. Glory to God. So you got a great opportunity to sow seed into a child's life. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that wonderful? And we're doing it all year long, so you're not sowing seed all at once in November and December. <laughs> so yeah. please join us. All right. Thank, thank you, Nikki. Appreciate it. Glory <clears throat> to God. Glory to God. So if you'd like to give into that, it is on our app, or you can write it on your your check, or you can however you want to do it. But you're, this is an opportunity to give and sow into these children's lives. Um, I do have... I, I do have one announcement that I don't usually do this, but I have to do it because we have ch we're changing leaders for a season. Um, Monica Riley is um, taking a season off from doing the Women's Connect group because um, she's in a stand and she she's just taking the season off. And so instead of giving that to, over to somebody and then having to take it back from somebody, I'm going to pick that up until she's ready to come back and do the women's group. So if women, if you got this paper, this is from, this is our first women's, well, with me. We're, it, it's this Saturday at 11 at 10 a.m. and we're calling it Photo Finish Event. And so it's basically designed, you just figure it out. Just come and then figure out and see if you are right. But it's basically designed to help our women connect and to get to know each other and to build relationships so we can call each other, we can pray for each other, we can stand together. There's some uh, scriptures that are sayings down here at the bottom. Godly friendship should be about loving each other, looking out for each other, and striving to bring out the best in each other. The same way Christ loves you, looks out for you, and strives to bring out the best in you. God is, has a bigger vision for our friendships than we even can begin to understand. You're placed with people in your life for a reason and a purpose. And it's a lot bigger than you know in God's, eye, in God's eyes. And so we want to develop these friendships. And that's what this event, it's this Saturday at 10 a.m. right here. So everybody say right here. All right. Hey, I want to mention uh, sure. we had uh, a couple in, I don't think they're here, but uh, I'm sure they're online. They just had another baby. Oh, I'm getting ready to do that. Oh, getting right. ready to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'm never here, so I, I have, don't know what's going I on. I have two praise reports, so I'd like Jason for you to show me the first picture, please. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Can you there see that? Is. Guess what the baby's name is? Ruth. Now show me that picture. Oh. Froggy and Emily, or Nathan and Emily, had baby Ruth. Baby Ruth, yeah. Uh, yes, Friday evening, Saturday, yesterday, yesterday. So there she is. We got a new baby. That's a praise God, isn't it? Healthy, strong. Froggy had a tadpole. Yes, another little tadpole. Glory to God. So she's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> Glory to God. And then I would like to share this praise report with you. 
Uh, back in 2020, my daughter Cindy had a friend that was diagnosed with glio, is I saying that right? Glioblastoma, which was a stage four cancer. This is a very aggressive brain cancer. Less than 10% of the people survive it. This cancer tends to grow fingers that spread all over the brain. Anyone who is diagnosed with this cancer is usually only given 10 to 12 months to live. This was the report my daughter's friend was given. I called the prayer group and immediately and got the prayer started for her. Mm. They took her in for surgery and then came all came all the chemo treatments. Her attitude was amazing and she was a real trooper. That lasted about another year and then on April 14th of 2022 she had another MRI and her report came back that she was cancer free. This is definitely a miracle from God. Her family was so grateful for every good report and her daughter posted on Facebook that a, that a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Oh, let me read this. Let me read that again. A grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Praise God. How true. I agree. Glory to God. And this... So, Father, we just thank you. Oh, man. We Listen. just thank you. We just thank you. I was thinking some of y'all might remember it. A good friend of mine had played for the NFL, and he was in the hospital, and he had a visitation from Jesus, and Jesus came in, and he was dying, and all the doctors said, he's dying. And they didn't know what to do. And Jesus visits him and says, be more thankful. And leaves. And he's like, okay. And he says, I'll be the most thankful guy you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. And the next day, they, they took him off all the machines. And he was healed and walked out three days later. And went back into the NFL. Yeah. See, so what did she say? A grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Do you think there's something to that? Yes. And, and how easy it is to get ungrateful or unthankful yes. when you're going through that. Yes. But a test, to get a testimony, there's a test. But why not be grateful during that test? Yes, glory to God. Glory to God. And something so, to it. There's something to it. There's definitely something to it. Um, and I, during pre-service <coughs> prayer, Charm was leading, and it was wonderful, oh, wonderful, it was wonderful. Oh, great. I wonderful. was watching it. Man, thank God. Thank God for our pre-service prayer times. But I, I felt led to do this. And after this, talking about this testimony and, and what Chip just shared, um, if you, and, and only if you want to, only if you want to, but I saw this. If you are in a stand, if you are believing for something, if you are, are just pressing into God and in a place and in a situation, if you feel comfortable enough, I would like you to stand up. Because I want us to all agree with yes, you. I yes, want the yes, people yes. around you to be able to let, put, yes. put hands toward you. Because we're a church family. Yes. We're a family. And as a family, we come together in the times that we have situations in our life. And we lift each other up. And we stand and we say, not in our house. Not today, enemy. You will not interfere with this church family. Their lives, their family, their homes, their finances, their children. <coughs> All of those things. So whatever, their businesses, everything. Everything. So if you see somebody... Let yes, me share something. Go, go ahead. Are you, well, go ahead. Go finish. ahead. No, I'm going to pray here. Remember what I asked you this morning? I'm, yeah. I'm eating my bagel. Yes. Just Get the visual image. Just looking what visual I do image, and bagel, writing down, looking coffee. at verses. And the Lord asked me this. He says, can the devil kill you? Can the devil kill me? Well... If he could kill me, he would have killed me. Yeah. If the devil could kill us, he'd just wipe everybody, all of God's people, everybody out like that. And God's plan would, would be destroyed. But he can. He's seeking whom he may. That's right, Steve. And I saw may and all of a sudden it came to me. May I go out and play? Right? To a, to a parent. I will let you. Are you with me? May I devour you? May I? Only if you let him. But otherwise, he can't. He has no right. He has no victory. He's been defeated. 
So that was for this moment right here. Yeah. He yeah. can't devour you. No. So we're not going to let him. No. And as, as, a, as your family, we're not going to let him. So we're going to be led what we're being led right now. We don't care about what's next or what's on the agenda. This is what needs to happen right now. So the, you may not, devil, destroy and devour and steal and kill these people. And we stop it right now. From the right hand of the Father, the most powerful place in the universe. Oh, such a time as this. Oh, our realm of identity is higher than ever before. And we're operating from that place, that realm. And we bind every attack and everything that has come against these people. Now in Jesus' name. Angels, we loose you. Angels, we charge you to give life and health and wealth to these people. Now receive it. Say, I receive that. In Jesus' name, we plead the blood over it. We took care of it at 1021 a.m. today. Amen. Amen. We're and operating in a higher realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it, like, like this note says, a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. So now we, now Father, we, we just thank, thank you. you thank we you, glorify thank you. you. We raise a hallelujah God, and we thank, thank you that a finished work oh, has been a show upon those that are standing, Lord, and their finances, their health, their home, their families, whatever area it may be, Father, you're the Father, you're the way maker, you're the miracle worker, Father, and we called that forth. And angels, thank you. Thank <coughs> Aren't you, you thankful you, you. that Liz is in church today? Yes. Hallelujah, Lizzie. She's here. Miracle of God, right there, right there. And That's Rich, we love Rich too. Yes, yes, we do. We love you, Rich, too. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Aren't you glad you have a family to stand with you? <coughs> and pray with you. Glory to God. We're going to give you an opportunity to give into the kingdom of God. A cheerful heart does it good like a medicine. We give as a cheerful, cheerful unto the Lord. I'm going to turn over in my book because I was reading this today. You know, we always go to Malachi 310, but I, and I wanted to read this to you. This is in, I have a this study Bible here and it says, um, off of bringing your ties in the storehouse so there may be food in my house and try me now in this. And this says, your giving proves God opens the windows of heaven to you and causes the devourer to be rebuked. Seed faith. In this passage of scripture, God actually invites people to try or prove him. To verify his trustworthiness with their giving. He says that by wit, by um, by withheld giving, we rob him. Now listen to this. We rob him of the privilege of pouring out great and overflowing blessings. See, that's how God looks at it. He doesn't look at it like you have to give. You get to give. And when you give into his kingdom, you give God the opportunity to, to bring it's a forth. privilege to him. Bring forth, pour out great and overflowing blessings. He calls for renewed giving with this promise. First, there will be food or resources for God's work in my house. Second, he says those who will give will be placed in position to receive great overflowing blessings. You can experience the windows of heaven actually opening with the blessings you will not be able to receive or contain. Third, God says that he will, he will, everybody say he will. He will. Rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He will cause every blessing that has your name, say my name, my name. written on it to be directed to you. And Satan himself cannot stop it. Do not be afraid to prove God with your giving. He is a God. He is God. And he will stand the test of every time. Glory to God. So come on up, ushers and greeters. Thank you. Thank God for our ushers and greeters. I'm so thankful for them. 
So thankful for the, they give up their time. Lord, bless them. So go ahead and pass the buckets, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give thank into your Lord, kingdom. We Father, you. we thank you that you've established this covenant word, that we can stand on this. And as we give, Father, all of those promises that are found in your word will come for, forth. Father, because you, you've stood the test of every time and will continue. Father, you are the, we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. Father, we are blessed. Just as Abraham was blessed because we are in covenant with you. And as we sow this seed into your kingdom. Father, this seed is being placed into your kingdom. Because we honor you. We worship you. We worship you with our giving. Father, we worship you with our giving. We worship you. We praise you. And we glorify you with our giving. And we choose to give unto you today. Because we love you with all our heart. And Father, we trust you. We trust you. We trust you, Father. Father, I thank you for that right there. Just trust him. Say, I trust you, Father. I trust you, Father, with everything in my life, including my giving, my tithes, my offerings, my finances, Lord. Father, and I thank you for it. I praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Do you have anything else? No, I'm good. We're good. Jesus. 
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak to you. Separated 
reach was wide too wide But from the far side of the chasm You had me in your sight So you made a way Across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne To build it here inside And there at the cross You paid the debt I owe Broke my chains, freed my soul And for the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. Thank you, Jesus, you have washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into glorious Who took my place Laid inside the tomb of sin You were buried for three days And then you walked back out again And now death has no sting And life has no end For I have been transformed By the blood of the Lamb Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, you have washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness to glory. Somebody just open your mouth and say thank you. 
Just say thank you. Where would we be without the blood of Jesus? Because of the I can crumble because of the love. I can enter in because of the Could come boldly because of the love. I can enter in. It was a perfect, it was a perfect sacrifice. Jesus so
Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and the Word of God is in me. To operate in a realm higher than most are familiar with, or that I've been familiar with. God, in that realm, I want you to reveal to us revelation, knowledge. Yeah, give us ears to hear and eyes to see what you have for us. Oh, Lord, we thank you and praise you, God. I feel like he wants to reveal something to us today. Because we've readied ourselves. And I just pray for unction and utterance to speak as I ought to speak from the oracles of heaven, Lord. Only, only through this pulpit, messages from heaven. Only in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you, praise and worship team. Aren't you glad for our praise? I think we have the best praise and worship team. God has brought them. Are you glad to be here today? Well, God was bragging on you guys to me this week. Isn't that something? And uh, I was mowing, and uh, I had a moment mowing, a mowing moment. And uh, a moed, <laughs> M-O-W-E-D, moed. See, he revealed something already. And uh, <laughs> and I was, I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I was talking to mom about it. And she said, oh, yes, oh, yes. I said, I was having a conversation, my spirit was having a conversation with God, and I'm mowing. I'm, I'm st st staying on the track, you know, and mowing this. But my spirit was having a conversation with God. And my spirit was asking God, why did you have me preach judging? And, uh, and then I, and my spirit continued to ask on. And all in and all out. And... Why the authority on Wednesday nights with mom and what's happening? My spirit was asking these questions. And God took me back and he said, you want answers. I'm going to show you answers from the beginning of your ministry. Kind of like Job, but not as harsh. <laughs> you want answers? I'm going to give you answers. And I'm writing and when God began to show me this, I, I had to stop it and I'm just weeping. Because the presence of God was there. Ran into candy. And uh, the first thing he showed me was, you remember in your backyard in Branson, we were renting this house. He said, I gave you your first revelation. And my first revelation was David and what he said in the spiritual words. Remember? And he said, and the whole earth shall know that there is a God in Israel. He said that when he was running towards Goliath. And he showed me that those spiritual laws that David put into existence are still working today. 
When he said it from that moment, thousands of years later, guess what? Everybody knows about David and Goliath. And I rem that, that was my first revelation that I ever received. And then he said, remember that hotel room after that one meeting? And I remember the exact hotel room. It was almost like he took me there. And I showed you how David would be as a pastor. And you said to me, okay, you can show me, but I'm not going to be a pastor. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, it's true. And he showed me in, in, in Chronicles when uh, the, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin were coming to him. and <clears throat> So it would be like his mighty men church. And, and he walked out to receive them. And he said, now if you've come to me peaceably, everybody say peaceably. peaceably. So if David was a pastor today, he would have met you out front and said, if you've come peaceably. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Now, what does that mean? Don't come and stir up strife in here. Don't come in here judging everybody and condemning everybody and criticize, criticize, criticize. Come in and, 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 and peaceably. And if you've come to help me. In other words, you've got an anointing on your life. You, you're a part of this. Do you all realize you're a part of this? A big part of this. And I'm getting ready to tell you, he's getting ready to brag on you. That's what he's going to do to me. And Tell me here in a second. And he showed me David as a pastor. And he says, now, if you uh, join up with me in peace and help me, my heart will be knit with yours. Can you imagine hearing that back then? That was the rock star of the day. David was, I mean, it. And he says, you join up with me, and I, my heart will be knit with you. Whoa. <laughs> but if you don't, may God rebuke you. Can you imagine as a pastor as he's telling new members or new visitors, may God rebuke you. <laughs> well, I laughed and thought, I wonder if he'd say that today. David probably would. He hasn't changed. Yeah, he had, he, he's not changed. And so he said, remember the first sermon I gave your mother? And it was David's mighty men. And it was what he told me to preach too. And I told you to study about his mighty army. Why? Because in his mighty army, you find out it says, and they became like the army of God. When those words came off the page, it was like, here's my blueprint. I had an army then, and I have an army now. Study these attributes because these men did it. These men were like my army. And so I studied that. And he says, now is the time for the army. He said, they were willing and they were obedient. They were all in. They were all out. They were loyal. They were not of, um, they were not of double heart. They were, they were loyal. They were not critical. And then he said this to me. Because remember, my first question was what to God? Why did you have me preach judging? And he said, now, you either can take this and believe it or not, because part of this is not scripturally based. It's just a conversation between me and God. He said, David could have judged those men because the world did judge them. The world judged them as misfit, uh, misfits and outcasts, but David didn't judge them. And he says, you want to know why? And I said, yes, Lord. And he said, because I told him don't. Because I have great ones in there coming to, to you. And he said, I told you, Chip, and I told Candace not to judge them when they come in. And you didn't. And you've been obedient. And you've been willing. So I'm sending the best. He said, I'm sending them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. He goes, I'm going to send some that have already are fit for battle. But then I'm going to send some that have been outcast and kicked out of other camps and churches. But they're the best. Woo! Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? I'm going to send some brand new ones. And he says, you might call them rookies. But I'm sending them. And it's going to be like my army of God. They'll be willing and obedient, not of double heart. And I run in to tell Candy. 
I don't know if the mower was still going or not. <laughs> Let's just, for the fun of it, say the motor mower still going. <laughs> As this story grows, you know, the mower will finish the yard. And... <laughs> Candy's reading this book that Jonathan gave her, and that's a whole other story of how God works. Jonathan tells me this story of him being led to get this book to her and and orders it and didn't want to give her the one he's had it all chopped up and everything and it was a guy that's not really from what you call faith camps or whatever but candy's in there and i run in and i go i heard god she's on she goes i need to read this to you she doesn't even say what did you hear i need to read this to you <laughs> and she begins reading it and when she started speaking it i go huh -uh, i'm hearing god i said i'm hearing god and he was continuing the conversation through this man who, how long ago was that book written, Jonathan? 20 years ago, through Jonathan and his route, he comes through Candace and all of this, and he's still talking about you. And he says this, and he said, I'm sending those, and this is what she was reading out of that book, who are willing to be tested and proven in order to become all that. And I thought, all in. He said, I'm sending those who are no longer spiritual lazy nor content to rest in the blessings and gifts of the Spirit alone. I'm sending those who desire to go further and higher in God. Yeah. Not just to know about me, but to experience in me. And I said, hike, take the hike. And he said, that's why I'm having you teach these messages. Woo! Not just to know about God and experience God, but a relationship, not just religion. I'm sending those who are willing to go to the wilderness and face intense hunger until they are fed by the Lord afterwards, and they will come forth victorious in the power of the Spirit. And I thought, power of the Spirit is the anointing. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Remember that? And they will rise up, everybody listen, they will rise up to this higher realm of identity. Some, oh, God Almighty. A higher realm of identity. And I kept saying that, a higher realm of identity. Lord, it's not just knowing who we are, it's, it's operating in a realm. There's a realm, there's a place, there's a position, there's an authority of your identity, but it's higher and it's time. And I'm sending them from the north, south, east, and west. I'm sending the best. And we're going to operate in a realm, a higher realm. I asked mom, I said, you ever heard that term? Higher realm of identity. She said, absolutely. First time I heard it, she said it was John G. Lake. He said, John G. Lake. She said, John G. Lake's daughter told me this. It was in his notes. It's not even in his book. He entered into a higher realm. He, he, he found out who he was in Christ and then he operated in that realm everybody say realm of position and miracles miracles unfamiliar to the world she said brother Hagen understood the higher realm of identity and that is what who we are in Christ. Everybody say, in Christ. in Christ. So this morning I had Mike, um, Emily, could you put that realm up there? <clears throat> I think, he, he just, this is off his phone from this morning. Uh, you know, king, royal, jurisdiction, or extent of government, a kingdom, a king's dominion. And I thought, we're learning on Wednesday night. If you haven't been coming on Wednesday night, um, you're missing it. So all of you who are coming on Wednesday night, this is about that realm. Are y'all with me? That's your position. The Lord told me years ago, location, location, location. And so this realm that is unfamiliar to even the body, and he also says identity. And the Bible says that we are in him, in Christ. No wonder Brother Hagin said, man, the first thing a, 
a, a, a person who gets saved should do is find out who they are now and operate in that realm and it's higher and then years ago y'all heard me say this I saw an interview with Jack Nicholas, great golfer Tiger was young and coming up on the scene and breaking all these records he was, he was winning tournaments by 20 strokes and, and and the world had the golf world hadn't seen anything like that, and he's winning majors. You you maybe have a guy win one at two majors at the most. He's winning them, but but up but up. And so they interviewed Jack Nicklaus, who was the greatest golfer who held the record. And they said, Jack, uh, what do you think about this kid Tiger? And he said, I'm not familiar with the level he's playing on. Well, that that stumped the interviewer but and, and the interviewer comes back and says but you're Jack Nicholas." <laughs> he goes thanks for reminding me and he goes oh okay back to you Bob it got real awkward <laughs> they're kind of looking at each other you know and right then the Lord said to me it's time the, for the church to operate on a level or realm that the world is not familiar with. Yes. Yes. Even Jack was not familiar with the realm and place that Tiger was operating out of. Are y'all with me or not? And it's, ti- it's, it's, it's backwards. The church is looking at things the world are doing and going, Wow. That's not, that's not the plan of God. And the only way to operate in that realm is to understand your identity operating in that. Now, years ago, the Lord sent me to Richard Roberts to help him when he went through that attack. And, uh, and I'm telling you, I don't know if a lot of people say that they fight the devil. I doubt if we all have fought the devil himself. Because the Bible does say what his actual uh, job is in Revelations, and he um, is after nations. And so the heads of nations. But there are some ministries that he comes against because they're so powerful and they rise up on a different realm. And one of them is Oral Roberts. So if you want to tag in, you know, you get involved in something like that. And uh, so I'm, I'm helping him, and I, I don't know why I'm there. God does. And uh, all of a sudden, the attack comes. He calls me in. I remember the Oral's house up there at ORU, and, and he says, are you with me or against me? And I go, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm with you. And he started crying and said, you're the only one. I, I brought the whole staff in, and you're the only one who's with me. And I didn't even know what he was talking about. He said, tomorrow CNN will be here, Fox News will be here. There will be helicopters all around, and the whole world will be focusing on this campus and what's going on. They were $50, $60 million in debt, and there was just a whole bunch of stuff going on, and it was terrible. And we went through that, and it was um, several months. And I'm, Candy and can vouch for me. We would be over there and, you know, way, way into the night and, and just... We're battling Satan, I'm telling you. And it was hard. And um, finally he calls me at 3 in the morning and says, the Lord told me to resign. And he says, if you resign, I will take care of the school, what your dad started, and I'll bless you and your family. And, and he had missed it. Now, do you remember that story I told you last week? This is I'm just following the Holy Spirit right now. When Brother Hagen said, why did you use that man and not her Miss Goody Two Shoes he said well Miss Goody Two Shoes I've called her to be in the missions field three years ago and she's disobeyed I can't use her and he says to me that's a bigger sin than the natural sin and I find out from Richard in his laundry room one night (laughs) 
we're talking to get away from everybody. And he said, years ago, I was told to step down as the president and go into the um, evangelistic nations for the nations. And he had missed it. And so here we are. And he says, now, I'll take care of you. And I'll take care of the school if you uh, get out now. And Richard didn't want to. And I said, you know you have to. And he said, yeah. He said, all right, we're going to have a press conference tomorrow. So we had the press conference. And um, the next day of the press conference, a man writes a check to ORU for $72 million and gets them out of debt. The next day. So I remember going home. We lived in Verdigris at that time. We came in for a year just to help him. And I was going to sleep through the night for the first time. And the Lord wakes me up. <laughs> and he said, and I wrote it down right here. It didn't have to be as hard as it was. And it didn't have to take as long as it did. I was wanting a, a pat on the back. I was wanting a good job. And I get... I get it didn't have to be that hard and it didn't have to take that long. What you listen to me everybody. Y'all listen to me? It doesn't have to take that long as you've been going through. And it doesn't have to be that hard. That's not God's will. He's not trying to teach you a lesson of patience or anything like that. He's not that way. And I said, "You're kidding me." I'm thinking that. And he says, "Contrary to popular belief, this is what he said. Not everyone who wins has to sweat in order to win." I thought you wanted to hear about a higher realm. Or did you just come to church? You just rolled in on a, on a gondola. And Mike opened the door with your little umbrella. And you got your brochures. Come on now. Or are we going to take the hike? Y'all are hikers now. He told me about y'all. And they're still coming. That's why he said build the barn. Build them. Glory to God. And he said, not everybody had to sweat in order to win. And, and he, he reminded me of David. Do you think he sweat much on that victory? Here Israel didn't know what to do. Day after day, day after day, week after week, month after month, we keep hearing this big, huge man deliver the news. Goliath was CNN at that time. And they were listening. And in fear, dismayed. No, no. And, and, and David shows up. Who? The one he told me would be a past member. The one who led the mighty men. The one who didn't judge them. David was a man after my own heart, right? He comes in and goes, what's going on? Anybody want some cheese and bread? <laughs> Sandwiches? Sandwiches here! You know? And so, uh, what's going on? They say, well, this guy, he, well, and all of a sudden he hears him defying God. You're defying the, the God that I'm in covenant with, who's on my dodgeball team, by the way. <laughs> and we just beat the lions and the bears. <laughs> So I'm sure we can beat the Giants. That makes him a cheesehead. He was delivering cheese, so he's a Packer. David is a Packer. That proves that David was a Packer fan. I hate it because I'm a Bear fan. But, uh, and he shows up and says, well, he's defined. And I mean, by the time he says, you know, he gets the stones and goes. He, it says he's running towards yeah. him. He's not going to waste any time. He's not waiting on God there. He's already ready. He's operating on a higher realm. He's in, he knows the covenant he's in. That's the higher realm. That's part of the higher realm of identity. He knew who he was in his covenant. Are y'all with me? 
Do you know who you are in your covenant? Who you are in your in Christ? Because that's a different realm. That's a different position of government. And you don't allow things. You shut them up. You run at them. Right? That was a sweatless victory. The Lord said to me, for some it may require a lot of work to do an assignment. Oh, really? Yeah, some it's going to take a lot of work. But for some who are plugged into the power, they will get results quicker and faster. Speedily. Somebody say speedily. speedily. Emily, can we go through these speedily? Let's do Psalm, Luke, and Second Peter. Psalm 81, 13, and 14. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. This is God speaking. What's that next word? Speedily. Somebody say it again. Speedily. And I would have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. <clears throat> God said that. That's my God. He hadn't changed. He'd have done it my way. Speedily. All right. Let's look at Luke 18, 6 through 8. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not our just God defend and protect and avenge his elect, his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? This is Jesus telling this story. He, he defer them and delay help. You, you think, in other words, Jesus saying, you really think that God would delay? Oh, he's not a withholder. He's not holding anything back from you. You really think he would delay? On their behalf, click. I tell you, <laughs> he's going to bring the truth now. He will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. Second Peter three nine. The Lord does not delay. Say the Lord does not delay, Lord does not delay. and is not tardy or slow about what he promises. According to some people's conception of slowness, but he is long-suffering toward you, not desiring that any should perish, but all that should turn to repentance. Lord, forgive us. We repent. For any tardiness on our part, for any lack of faith, or not operating in the covenant realm of our higher true identity in you. Help us to know this. Amen? Are y'all with me or not? When you operate in my power, you will build no sweat. It will be with no sweat or much effort, and you will accomplish it with excellence. And I wrote everything down right here. He said, the tragic thing is most believers are missing this source of power, this source of victory, this source of guaranteed victory, this effortless, sweatless victory in their everyday lives. They're missing out on it. And it's, and it's a guarantee. They're missing out on it. You could be killing lions and bears and giants and tigers. Oh, my. Every day. Every day. He said power is what produces results. He said it's the same in the natural law. Power has to be there to produce results. It's the same in the realm of the Spirit. Power produces results. Jesus did not do one miracle, not one healing, until the power of the Spirit came upon him. He couldn't do it without it. You can't either. Now it's time to know our true identity in the higher realm. Amen. And operate in that realm and that place. And he gave me the microphone analogy. You could buy the... You know, there's microphones that cost $20,000. I didn't know that. but Like on those shows, The Voice and stuff. And then there's... You can buy these amplifiers, and you can have the best equipment and the greatest people with knowledge to put them together, and you can get all of that. But if there's no power, some, and you have all these geniuses like, like Jason and, and everybody and, and all these guys with all these degrees, and, and they can do, and, and, and the power, come, a storm knocks it out, something happens, guess what? you got great equipment. I know it's the best, $20,000. You have degrees in this. I know. I've got a master's and doctors and blah, blah, blah. But you have no power. The, 
There's a lot of the church that's trying to operate on that realm. And they got all this wisdom. And they got all this knowledge and verses and can quote. No power. Powerless churches. Powerless churches. That's where you want to go? Powerless church? Let's talk. Where am I going? I don't know. How about the glorious church? How about power? Y'all ready for that realm? You want to walk in that realm? Ching, ching, ching. Let's walk in that realm. Whoo! Somebody say, that's my Jesus. I love that. It's good if you love it, you need to say it. He, he said to me, you know, you can, you can take a person and they can both go to the same church and hear the same messages. And you got person A and you got person B. And they got the same equipment and they got the same knowledge. And one is operating. And the other one isn't. In the same place. Two different results. Why? Because one is uh, working according to the power. Look, look, look at Ephesians 3.20, King James. Are you all okay? Is anybody here like, uh, Chip, I've heard this. But I, I want you to hear it thinking about a higher realm of identity, a place. Now, and to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to what? Power. Wait, wait, according to. So it's according to what? Power. That what? Power. Let's look at the amplifiers. Now to him who, by in consequence of an action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do What? Super abundantly, far over and above all that you dare ask or think. I would think what he's talking about right there is on a level the world is not familiar with. And he said it's time for the church to operate on a level the world is not familiar with. And I'm not talking about just the fivefold ministries, I'm talking about where I call them. I will call them in the businesses. I will call them in the schools. I'll call them in the governments. I'll call them in the fields. I'll call them in the mission. I'll call them, and I need them to operate on a level the world is not familiar with. Amen? <clears throat> Far above all that we can dare, your little 10% mind, or even prayer, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Glory. There, it's according to what? The power. Now, now, the Lord said to me, because I'm the type of coach that every, I want everybody to get it. I want just even the, the, the weakest or whatever to get it, the youngest. The, and um, he said, but everybody's not. How do you like to hear those words? I, yeah, you know what I mean? Because <clears throat> your heart. Well, think about it. God wants everybody saved. And I said, God, you're going to have to show me where that's written. And he went to 2 Timothy 3. This know that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall become lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, unthankful. And the, and the last verse says, and they'll have a form of godliness. They will have the form without power. I can teach you. I can't. Well, I could teach you the form of, of, of the best. A hitter swing or maybe a golf pro could teach you Tiger Woods exact swing but but he can't produce the power right. he can teach you the form are y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I am I'm getting this <laughs> I'm preaching to myself but do you have the power and he said they'll have a form of godliness now watch what it says next in other words, one translation says, yeah, they'll go to church. But they'll deny the power. 
but not here. Say, not me. So you want to go to a church and you want to be a Christian that denies power and never operates in that realm. It's a higher realm of identity that David knew about. Are y'all with me? And that's what we're doing. He says, Chip, I said, don't judge a single one that comes through that door. Love them and train them to be champions in my army. That's what he's talking about right here. Amen. All right. Are y'all, are y'all okay? Now, how do we get to this identity of this realm is the first thing you need to know is Christ, what it means. Christ is not Jesus' last name. And I don't know who put Jesus H. Christ or whatever. I don't know where they got that initial. But Christ is the anointed one in his anointing, right? All right. Now, Brother Copeland years ago preached a sermon. He said, translate and meditate. Every time you see this word, translate and meditate. And so I heard the Lord say that to me. Every time you see Christ, translate and meditate the anointed one and his anointing. I can do all things through... Now, translate and meditate. I can do all things through the anointing and the anointed one and his anointing. There is no condemnation to those who are in... The anointed one and his anointing. My anointed army, my anointed men and women of God. There's no condemnation. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. To live is what? The anointing. We are to live in this anointing. Amen. The biblical definition of the anointing. Now, I've never heard this preached. I had God tell me this when we were going through all this, but he called it the biblical definition. I'm, I haven't gotten this okayed by anybody or anything, but nobody stopped me, mom or anybody. So they all agree with me. But it's God. It was God who told me. Acts 10, 38. Everybody say biblical definition. Biblical definition. I just gave you the anointing uh, Christ and the anointed one and his anointing. By the way, Satan's name is the anti He's not anti-faith. He's not anti-love. He's anti-anointing. Because he once operated in that. If you go back to Genesis, it says he was an anointed cherub. That power was a different, higher realm. Then he fell. Right? So he doesn't want the body of... Y'all aren't translating and meditating. We're the body of who? The anointed. anointed. Jesus is the head. He's the anointed. That's a different realm. Glory to God. Okay, where where am I? Oh, Acts chapter 10, 38. Acts 10, 38 in the King James. How God, everybody say God. God. Who? Who? He anointed. Who anointed? Who did he anoint? Okay, Jesus who? Jesus Christ? Does it say Jesus Christ? Because he's not anointed yet. It's very identify here. Are y'all with me? The verbiage is identify. He's getting ready. (laughs) Jesus is getting ready to go to a higher realm of identity. And he's going to, from that moment on, operate in that higher realm of identity. Because up until then, not one miracle, not one healing, nothing. He's not plugged into the power yet. And God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with, drum roll please, he, he anointed him with what? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. Right? So the Holy Spirit, which is synonymous with power, every time you see Holy Ghost, you will see power. They're, they're together. He returned in the, from, in the Holy Spirit and power. Power. Now, the Holy Ghost is the anointing. Now, every time you see Holy Spirit, you can translate and meditate. My body is a temple... Of the anointing. 
Am I going too fast? The Holy Spirit is the anointing. The anointing produces power. It produces supernatural power. Nothing is impossible power. Now, you cannot produce supernatural power. You cannot. You can produce natural power. But when the Holy Spirit is upon you and in you, you can produce supernatural power. Acts 1.8. Take me there real quick, if you would, Emily. But you shall receive what? Power. Come on, everybody read this. Power. After when? But you're trying to operate it without it? Ain't happening. That'll be another church without power. You will have the equipment. You will have the knowledge, but you will not have the power. God is coming back for a glorious church. A church that operates in power. In full demonstrations. With signs, wonders, and miracles. Another giant, big deal. Some of our people needed help. We took care of it right there. Amen? You shall receive power when... The Holy Ghost is upon you because that is the anointing. He is the anointing. Old Testament examples. Old Testament, there was only power on the... Uh, God would only put the anointing upon kings, priests, and prophets only. Unless it was a special occasion. Like Elijah. He outran the chariot's horses. Anytime God used anybody, he... I can promise you this when we get to heaven you're going to see them and they're not going to look what you think they were like because you read the story if he used somebody to outrun chariots I can promise you he didn't look like a runner because everybody would say well look at him he runs everywhere he goes and they would have gave him the glory and it would have took the glory from God are y'all with me? Same with David. Samson. So I can promise you, when you see Elijah, you're the one who out, you're the one who outran the horse. Can you imagine? Elijah's grandchildren, look at Papa. He's like, my God. Have y'all read that story? The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Yeah. <laughs> How many would like to see that now? Yeah. Why can't we see that now? We can. I preached this and taught this to 240 ORU students. And it was volunteer class to come in. All of them athletes. They had 240 of them. The Lord said, have a class, teach them. And I did. And it dwindled down, dwindled down, dwindled down, dwindled down. They stopped coming. Six of them remained. Six. One of them was Moses. He watches. He's in Dallas. Moses was six foot six, uh, son of a Baptist preacher in Dallas, Texas. But man, he was hearing this. Built like a Greek god. <laughs> but he averaged about, I don't know. 10, 12 points a game. He was a senior in ORU. He got a hold of this thing, what we're talking about. He said, I can do it in basketball. Yes, you can do it in basketball. I would not. Why would God not want? Why would he not? He needs it. Does he have unsaved basketball players and fans? Yes. He got a hold of it. He stayed with it. He, he did it. How many know that in, uh, what was it that the Lord told uh, Gloria in... Um, and inconsistency lies the power. How many of us have been consistent? With it? Some of us have heard this story over and over and over, or this teaching over and over. How consistent have we been? Because that's where the power lies. And these six did it. I mean, every day. We're operating on that higher realm. And we go down to Texas A&M, and it was on ESPN, and it was rare that ORU was on ESPN. And we just happened to catch a night where they needed a game, and we're playing Texas A&M was ranked real high. And I was there. I went with them. And uh, he, uh, Moses scores uh, 45 or something. And we knock off Texas A&M. And they, they, they come to interview him. And you got to know Moses. Moses is, boom. Hey, Moses, you, you average 10 to 12. Your high is 14 or whatever. What happened? 45. And he goes, it was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All of a sudden, the channel goes, dun, dun, dun. dun. <laughs> Due to technical difficulties, ESPN. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, he screamed in the camera. <laughs> we don't even know the stories of what that did, do we? Of who heard that in a living room or popcorn. <laughs> Somebody who was backslidden basketball player or what? It was the Holy Ghost. There was the two little girl golfers who went pro. There was the, oh gosh, what was his name? Rodriguez or something, the, 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 little, the little baseball player. And he came, and he wasn't even on the team. He didn't make it. But they let him be like a manager. And he tried out and he didn't make it as a pitcher. But he'd say it every day. He'd go and he'd practice outside the dorms. He didn't even get to practice with the teams. And so uh, they're playing somebody real big, Texas or somebody, and it was on TV and, or, you know, one of those channels. And they'd run out of pitchers. They had a lot of injuries, and, and they had some guys uh, ineligible, and they're, they're just in the dugout. We need a pitcher. Hey, he pitches. I pitch. So they go get him a uniform, and they run him out there. And he's out there. And he's warming up. And uh, the announcer goes, you can, he's, uh, we don't have him on our roster sheet. They couldn't find him. They didn't know his name because he wasn't on the roster. And uh, they said, but he's saying something as he's warming up. I don't know what it was. And you know what he was saying. I'm anointed to pitch on a level the world's not familiar with. And he pitched that game, and they won that game. And he got a uniform, got a letter, finished out his career, and uh, played a few years in the minor leagues and then got up with the Los Angeles Angels and played in the pros. They operated in a different realm, a higher realm, because they knew their identity in it. It's a governmental, legal thing, and that's why you got to know about your authority. It's a higher realm, people. It ain't just being Christian. I know God, I've got the equipment. Right? Come on now. All right, are y'all okay? Are you sure? I could give you a whole bunch of different more. But uh, Acts 10, 38, and God anointed Jesus with what? The Holy Spirit. Then there's Samson, right? Now, how many think, when you think of Samson, what do you think of him? Strong? Right? I remember going into a church in Colorado Springs and they had this life-size statue of Samson. God, he was ripped. They should have drug tested him. <laughs> he would not have qualified. He would have been ineligible. But it doesn't one time say in the Bible anything about his physique. But yet the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. That was the power, not his muscles. If he'd have been that big and ripped, everybody said, well, yeah, look at him. Are y'all with me or not? Gideon. Are you kidding me? Gideon's the biggest. Gideon was the biggest pencil neck. He tried to talk God out of. Who, me? You got the wrong guy. And he even tells him why. Let me go through my ancestors i come from a long line of pencil necks i've never been in a gym are you kidding me look at me and and so he he's still questioning 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 and finally god said the spirit of the lord came upon him, just overtook him right in the middle of his not even going to let him finish and it said it overtook him can you imagine the supernatural power of god overtaking you this can happen to you and all of a sudden, he turns into, I can't. Whoa! Yeah! He's flexing. He's still little. His wife's going. I always call it Samson 1 and Samson 2. 
Which one are you? And then, you know, so the Lord said to me when I was preaching this message, I don't know if I can finish it today, probably can't, but we'll just continue it on. But the Lord was saying, Chip Jesus everywhere he went. Now, what solidified this for me is what activated this. How do we operate in this? And Jesus, I read in there, said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Right? He spoke it. I'm in Sacramento preaching, and God said, Even I had to speak to release that power. And I said, God, what are you talking about? In Genesis, it said the Spirit of God was hovering. It's like mom does. And uh, hovering, well, why was the whole... That's the same Spirit now. That's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And that's also the same Spirit that lives in you. And what identity, what realm are we operating in? Come on now. Higher. And so... Uh, glory to God so it's hovering and he said why was he hovering and he was waiting he was waiting for God to speak in faith believe and speak in faith and it happened he said in each of my believer he's hovering some of you He's been hovering for a long time. And you keep building your equipment and your knowledge, but no power. He said, this is the hour for power. And I'm going to show it through this church. Some may hear this and they may run out those doors. That's okay. We don't judge them. We love them. We pray for them. Amen. Because that's what the Bible says to do. We don't judge anybody. Amen. Are y'all okay? Even though you heard this again, are you okay? Glory to God. Amen. So, look at Jesus' timeline, and we'll finish with that. I'm, I'm not even halfway, but that's okay. We can pick it up, back up. Jesus didn't operate in the power until he was baptized by John in the river Jordan and the Holy Spirit fell upon him like a dove. Now watch this. We're going to start the timeline. Watch this. Then, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, this is what it says, now he's full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He went straight from there to the Mount of Temptation where he faced and defeated Satan with the Word and Spirit. Then he returned in the power of the Spirit and there went out a fame about him through the whole region. Now, he didn't do it for the fame, but the fame happened. Are y'all with me? Why? Because it reached people. And we're not doing. if you're doing it for the fame, that's the wrong motive. But guess what? The anointing will bring fame. Are y'all with me? It will bring you know, the media and everything else. And, and that hadn't happened yet, and it should happen. So he then goes to the synagogue, and when he goes to the synagogue, if y'all, haven't, if y'all been over there with mom or anything, they say there's always a chair that is sit right where the reader goes, and that chair is designated for God. Nobody, listen to me, nobody dare sit in that chair. Are y'all with me? It's a custom they have. I remember hearing about that from the rabbis. Huh, I never knew that. Now watch this. You don't have to believe it, but I do. He goes into the synagogue to read, and there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah, the book that he read about when he was a boy, and he studied. And he opened it and found the place where it was written. you got to understand something. They didn't do that. It was already predestined what they said. And it is a years in advance. But he found, he he went against custom. He's operating on a higher realm. 
It's no longer custom or religion. Are y'all with me? And he finds where that is. And he finds the book of Isaiah. He opens it up. And he found the place where it was written. There it is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he anointed me. In other words, in Hebrew, he said, Ani I Ashia. Whoo! Where he said that, they just found that synagogue. And we were the second group to come in there because the mom, we're in there. They're still dusting off. The, the floor was beautiful. They found the place where he stood because the scroll, the, the platform was there. And all we could do is go, and, and they were so excited because they said, all through Israel, we know where Jesus was and about and where, but never exactly. And they said, this is the first time we can say he was exactly there. Oh. Randy was the TV cameraman. And, uh, and mom, 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 nothing stops mom. And she goes back and she's talking to the priest. She's talking, 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 talking to all of them. And she gets favor. And she comes back, Chip, Chip, what? They're going to let you stand there. Five minutes. And they said they haven't even let anybody stand there. Was you there? She's got the picture. She was there. They're going to let you stand there. Because they heard about what you have been teaching. About Jesus going throughout the whole Galilee. He didn't just say it there. It says he went about the whole Galilee. Every time he got up and spoke, he would say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because I'm going to operate on a higher realm of identity. I operated for 33 years on another realm. There was no miracles. But not now. He's the head. We're the body. What are we doing? Oh, I know about it, Chip. The whole time. And, and, and I know about it, and your power cord's dragging. <laughs> I just saw that. I just, a lot of Christians with their power cord. Like a little tail. Hey, you need, you need to go. No, you need to plug in. Yeah, they're unplugged. Plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> plug it in, plug it in. And let the power begin. It'll get in your skin. Plug it in, plug it in. The Spirit of the Lord is... Ani'i Ashia! Whoo! Can you imagine? Because we know their reaction because they got offended at it. Who are you? Breaking these customs. Rolling out, not reading what you were supposed to read. And he goes, after he read, he hands the scroll back to the minister and sat down. <laughs> I'm like, is anybody, does any, is anybody seeing? Oh yeah, Chip, he sat down, he was tired. Oh no, no, no. Why didn't it say he sat down every time he sat down? Why didn't the Bible say Jesus sat down every time he sat down? One time. He sits down in the... Do y'all believe it or not? You don't have to. I am God. God in me. We're talking about a different realm here of identity. You don't know your identity, church. That's what he was saying. But there's a higher realm of identity. Is that, that's it? How did you get that? Jason. That's it. The scroll would have laid there. And right behind it. And, and, oh. Where? Oh. Oh, wow. They let mom in, yeah. Oh, is that guy? 
Yeah, that's Guy. Wow. Why was I wearing that hoodie? That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This, and so I, I get there. And now remember, he sits down. And they get, they say, who are you? Who are you? And he was telling them, I am. If he's the head, and it's a different realm. Amen? Glory to God. Are y'all getting anything? We're not going to deny this power. And he designed and equipped each of us to operate in this power for everyday life. And it's available for every born-again believer. And it's not just for the five-fold ministry. Amen? Glory to God. 1046. What time do we normally get out of here? We're already out of here? All right, I'll, I'll end with this. Now, watch the similarities. Watch um, the similarities between Jesus' description of the comforter and John's description of the anointing. John 14. Jesus talking to his disciples right before his crucifixion. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, that's what he was anointed with, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you what? All things. Somebody say all. all. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. First John 2, it says, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye knows all things, and that anointing which you have received abides in you. So all things needed to know is in you. And he goes on to say, And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things. But Lord, we need preachers. But we're not talking about the preacher. We're talking about the anointing in the preacher. Amen. And unction, anointing is the same Greek word charisma. Anointing and unction are the same Greek word charisma. And it's a smearing, it's a painting, it's a covering, it's an overtaking. And that's what happened to Elijah. That's what happened to Samson. That power just smeared. And the Holy Ghost personality will supernaturally overshadow your personality when this happens. His character will paint over your character. When the superpower of the third person of the Trinity is smeared on your natural self, you'll have to introduce yourself to yourself. You will suddenly become supernatural. Whatever you previously, previously did in your, in your natural ability, you will now do supernaturally. And we had those six people, and they did it, and Rodney Clark was the first one. And they went to levels that people were not ever familiar with. But we did it all for the glory of God. And it reached people. And after it was all over and I was leaving over you, and those six came together, and we threw a little party, goodbye party, whatever. And they said, Chip... Everything happened that was in that Bible that happened to Jesus. Our fame spread. All of us have been on magazine covers. All of us have went to a higher level. And all of us have had more open doors in our arenas to meet and get people saved and healed and, and the power of God. All of it while those other 236 could have. But their power cords are dragging around. As they go out and get their diplomas. And they go off into whatever they're going to do. No power. There has to be power. And he's the power source. Jesus knew it, and he would not go anywhere without saying it. I want everybody to know, it ain't, it ain't me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So what you're about to hear is the anointing. And it's the same power that raised is going to raise me. <laughs> right? It's the same power that created the universe. And it's in us. Amen? Did y'all receive that today? 
but did you see did you receive it a little differently because it's a higher realm of identity mom said that john g lake's daughter said that it rocked his world it changed everything it was an awakening to him he was a christian he knew all of this stuff and he had all this information but when he when he found out about a higher realm of identity he started operating in it brother hagan did the same thing he said the very first thing a christian should do after they get saved is get filled and then after that find out who they are in him and not just find out who we are but operate in it everybody stand up somebody say this would you say i am anointed Maybe that was the first time you've ever said it. But I can guarantee you this, your spirit was created to say it. If Jesus said it, we're to say it. Amen? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say it. The word of God is in me. Therefore, I am anointed on a level that the world is not familiar with. All for the glory of God. Lord, we are plugging in at AGC. Now, in order to operate in this power, if you start judging one another, I'm not talking about parents discerning for their children. I'm not talking about bosses at work. I'm not, there's positions that you have to make decisions. Are y'all understanding what I'm talking about? I was talking about amongst yourselves... So we're not going to judge and criticize each other. That unplugs the power source pretty quick. When you get out of love or you get offended, that unplugs the power source. So Chip, that's why I had you. That's why I told you to, to preach on judgment. Because if you're going to this higher realm and you're going to operate in it, I don't know about you, but we're going to see it. I'm not just praying about it and hoping it one day. We're going to live in it happening here amen? amen singers and musicians playing I remember when it would get on brother Hagen's drummer or it'd get on some guitar player How, can, yeah Keith Moore and, and songs would come out and I would see them just start playing but we've got to conditional too structured for the move. God help us. I'm excited. I am anointed. What did David say when they tried, his men told him to kill Saul? <laughs> Touch not God. He had every right to judge Saul. He had every right to kill Saul. But he said, don't touch that anointing. Well, Saul had stepped out of that anointing. It don't matter. He once was anointing, and you don't mess with it. So if, if David was allowed, if he was around us in some of our lunch, you know, we're having lunch, or we're talking, or we're texting, or so, socializing on media, and we start talking about somebody, even we started out with bless their hearts or whatever, or I'm just saying dot, 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 dot. I'm not judging, I'm just saying, bless their hearts. I really believe David would say, hey, don't touch God's anointing. Why? Because you won't operate in that lion, bear killing, giant killing anointing. And it's a different realm. He took me from a shepherd to a king. Yeah, I made mistakes, but I repented. Amen? We're the body of Christ. And man, how timing is this teaching on Wednesday night. And if you haven't come, come. And we have a big crowd that comes. I've been telling some people, are going, you're kidding. I didn't know about it. I'll come. So Lord, thank you. Let's just all lift up our hands and thank him for the word today. Say, I receive that word. Say, I am anointed. I am anointed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He has anointed me 
And the Word of God is in me. And I will operate in the, for the glory of God on a level that the world is not familiar with. Amen, amen. And Lord, I just want to thank you again that we took care of those problems earlier today. We were led, and that's the start of this new season of a higher realm of identity. Say, a higher realm of identity. You know, just like Mom said in class, she said, ask the Lord to give you wisdom and revelation about this. Lord, teach me more about a higher realm of identity. And I asked him that same thing, and he said, that's why you're learning about authority. That's why you have to learn and know about the anointing and stay plugged in. Plug into the power, because now is the hour. Ha! Huh. Glory to God. Anybody got anything else? The rest of this next Sunday. God willing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he... Okay, just in case the Lord leads him this direction. I, I just felt this in my spirit to keep yourself stirred up on this. Yeah, look at Just up. as Jesus said, and he read out of Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. So all, all this week, all this week, yeah. all this week, just be stirring that up. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. Just like all these people that were at these, at this college, that was a platform. God has given every one of as a platform. It can be a huge platform, you know, like Rodney where on um, basketball stage as, as a professional player, or it can be just right in your community, but you've been given a platform. And that's why this is important. So all this week, it, activate it. Activate it. And then be ready on Sunday. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, me for good. he has anointed me. So I want you to st- say that. I want you to uh, just concentrate on it, study it, get ready, and then come expecting next Sunday. All right? Glory to Ask God. Ask me how I'm doing. How are you doing, Chip? I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. Wake up. I am anointed. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me. Yes. He has anointed me to preach, to teach, yes. to train, to coach, to husband. To Father, He has anointed me to be healthy. I'm anointed to give. Oh, how about putting that power on your seed? See, we're talking about another realm. Y'all thought it was just for one thing. Uh-uh. It's where you live and and operate government and kings. I'm anointed to pastor. We're anointed to love. Maybe there's somebody that you, you just... I'm anointed to forgive. I'm anointed to forgive. I'm anointed to live and to have my being. I'm anointed. The anointing. The Holy Ghost. When I got born again, that, that Holy Spirit came in, inside of me. That power. That same power that raised Christ, that Jesus did all those miracles with, is inside of me. And what am I doing? I'm releasing. I'm activating. When you believe, you speak. And mom said, the Lord told her, he said, some are not saying and therefore they will not see it. But some are speaking and they'll see it. Amen? Say, I'm anointed. Some of you need to, uh, I'm anointed to make money. I'm anointed to, I'm anointed to run a business. I'm anointed to sing. I saw it one day on, on The Voice and the judges, all they could say was, do you remember that? Oh, I wish we still had that. I don't know how to save things like that, but. They said, all we can say is, it's anointed. And that was on national television. The, the judges are crying. This, this, gal, this little girl sang this, this Christian anointed song that the Lord led her to sing. And they're crying. They don't even know why they're crying. Because it's the power of God. In Chelsea, Chris. In Chelsea, the anointing. Amen. In Owasso, in Skytook, in Collinsville, in Tulsa. Everywhere. My anointed body. Operating on a higher realm with me. On a level they're not familiar with. Lord, I repent for, for, for keeping that aside and not keeping that fresh in us. But boy, we're back on track. 
Amen? Are we good? Kylie, you got something? We all good? So do I release them now? I don't, I'm not really good at releasing them. Well, hey, I'm anointed to release them. All right, you got a song? No? Play a song. I'm anointed. I'm appointed. Come on. For the Spirit of God lives in me. Yeah, come on. Keep it going. I'm anointed. I'm appointed. Ha! For we shall do incredible things. I'm anointed. Oh, I'm appointed, I'm appointed for the Spirit of God lives in me. I'm anointed and I'm appointed and I shall do incredible right, things. Now, I'm going I'm to pray a prayer and let you go. But I believe that was from the Lord. Because the Jews say anyone who is anointed is appointed. And anybody who's appointed is anointed. And so we've all been appointed, therefore we're anointed. Everybody reach up your hands. Lord, I ask you for this word to stay fresh in our hearts. Lord, give us more revelation. More revelation about the higher realm of identity. More revelation about uh, who we are in Christ. More revelation, Lord, come to us daily. And we're going to speak it more, Lord. We're going to plug into it more, Lord. It's going to be real. It's not going to be something one day that's going to happen to me. Make it real to them right now. Right now they receive how real this message is. And they never become the same. In Jesus' name. And I ask you to bless them, bless their food, bless their families, bless their finances, bless their bodies. Bless them, Lord. And angels protect them as they go. In Jesus' name, amen.
never be more love than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more love than I am right now. Ooh. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I would try. Yeah.